Okay, so in this talk, um, it's going to conclude the little sequence of three, the little trilogy uh, on um, ways in which you can implement online games. So the first two of these were on tic-tac-toe, and so a sort of very simple and a more sophisticated way in which you could build a, like a board game or a turn-taking game. It doesn't, doesn't have to be a board game, anything where you one player takes a turn, passes the data to the other, the other player takes a turn, and so on. And I thought it'd be nice to just give you a little bit of an illustration how you can build something that has more of a real-time interaction uh, where we use... So in this game, we're going to use a um, kind of combination of UDP for like racing, so-called. It's not exactly racing, but it's a bit like racing. And then we're using TCP to kind of actually set the game up and coordinate the game. So again, example code, similar to the multi-threaded online tic-tac-toe. So this could support you know, lots and lots of different people having their independent races simultaneously. Just you, you might have this much more sophisticated version of this to do uh, like car races. You know, if you're doing like Xbox and you're racing against your mates, maybe with five of you per, per race, this is the sort of you know, a vague idea about how you might do that, let's say. It's, you know, there'll be much more sophisticated stuff going on in the professional version of this. So that's the idea. And I'll just show you, show you how to play it and then explain how it works. And if you want the more details, as usual, you can actually download the code. So here we have the code. So you have the race game package here. And then we've got the, um, the server. So I'll start the server up in NetBeans in the usual way. So there's, there's the server running. And then we've got two clients here. So it's a bit like the tic-tac-toe game in the sense that we, can, we have a menu. We can choose to play the racing game. And when we choose to do that, we connect to the server and, um, and can actually start the game, um, or we can exit. It's like, you know, good choice, eh? So let's connect with type 1. So here and then, then we type 1 on this other client. So now it's telling us that uh, I'm player 2, and I start racing by entering an X followed by the return game. So that's what re return key. So that's what this game is about. The idea is that each player enters X return, X return, X return, X return. And the first player to enter 20 of these Xs um, wins the game. That's why it's a racing game, because it's uh, they're competing to reach the destination, and the destination is having entered 20 Xs, if you like. So, you know, if there was like a jumping game, they could press a key to make the little character jump, and it would be effective the same sort of thing with the first person who jumps past the line winning the game. So, <coughs> so that this player then will enter a few Xs. Let's suppose they're doing simultaneously. Um, so this player enters some X's, blah, 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 blah. And this player enters a few more X's. And we keep, if this one enters X's faster than the other one, eventually it turns, it'll end up being, you get this message, you are the winner. And because of a slight bug in the code, this one has to <coughs> keep entering X's to find out that it's actually lost. So this one entered 20 X's before this one. So this one becomes the winner, and it tells me that I'm winner. I'm the winner, that this one's the loser, and gives me the option to play another game, to connect again to the server, and be passed off to a game handler that will you know, handle another game. So that's the game. You might you know, judge that it's not the most exciting or entertaining game, or you might want to spend, you know, have some parties, get your mates around, and actually play the game. You know. You know, maybe put some 100 quid a game or something. You know, it could be, you know, could be a lot of fun. Right-ho. Um, so the architecture, um, similar to the multiplayer online tic-tac-toe, we've still got the usual interfaces, hold our constants, usual connection listener, game handler. This is a new class. This is because uh, we're using a combination of TCP and UDP, and we've got these blocking calls, and UDP. I'll explain all this in a bit, but we, we need this extra bit of complexity to, to, co to, to coordinate the, in it, to enable us to listen for messages from the server telling us that the other player's won. And then we've got the messages that are being sent, and then we've got uh, the racing game client and the server. So I'll go through all these in, in turn. So, there's the, so this is the usual architecture. We've got the racing game server launching this connection listener. One client connects, another client connects, and then we've got a game handler that actually play, handles the game between the two clients. And then another two clients connect, and we get another game handler, and so on and so forth, until our server's completely overloaded, um, but probably not going to be the case unless it's very popular. So we've got the network details. In this case, we've got a TCP port as well as a UDP port because we're using combination of TCP and UDP in this game. Debugging output. 
Um, and these are the messages. These are a lot simpler than the tic-tac-toe because all we need to do is for the, tell the clients, clients to tell the server that they're ready. The server tells the client to start. And then this, when one of the players has entered 20 crosses or whatever the number is, um, then they get, both players get sent a player one message or, or they get the player that's won gets a player one message and the player that's lost gets a player lost message or there's a player draw message. So the, um, so the messaging is a lot simpler because it's just like it's a more simple game in some ways, although it's more architecturally complex because of the real time thing. So this is roughly what happens at the client side as I showed you in the demo. So the client connects to the server, waits for the game to start, and it's like a, the checkered flag in the, in the race, right? The server says, go, you know, start entering your crosses. Then the client reads input from the user. Whenever the user enters a cross and presses return, it sends a UDP datagram to the, with its ID. Each client has an ID, and it sends a packet with its ID to the server, or to the game handler in this case. And then it, we have a separate thread that checks for the end of the game to receive the messages from the server. And when the game's over, it tells the client, sorry, you've won, sorry, you've lost, or hooray, you've won, kind of thing. So that's what the client does. It's reading the input from the user, reading the crosses, and telling, sending the appropriate messages and receiving the appropriate messages to, to make all that work. And the client side, um, here's the sort of playing the game part. So we, got the, we open up the UDP socket. And what we need on the client side is this game status checker. So if I'm the client, I don't know. I need to some way of knowing whether the other player has won the game, right? I know if I've won the game. Well, I, you know, if I know the, where the finishing line is, like how many crosses I've got to enter, then I can know that when I've entered all my crosses, but I don't know whether I've entered all my crosses before the other user has entered all their crosses, right? So it's the server that coordinates the actual uh, game by receiving the packets from the client and counting them up and, and seeing who's actually entered their crosses first. So the server needs to notify the client um, that about the status of the game and whether the game's been won or lost. The problem is um, that the client, the main client thread is busy reading input from the user and sending off the packets um, to the server. So what we need, whereas the receipt to receive the messages from the server, we need another thread. It's, it's like a blocking read. So the only way we can do that is by having a separate thread that sits there waiting for notifications from the server about whether the, the game has been won or lost. So here we have, this is what the game status checker is doing. It's a, a separate thread that sits there, receives and receives messages from the server. And when the server sends a game over message or player one message, this, this Boolean on the checker thread is updated, and then we exit the while loop. And then if it's a draw or whatever, or it's victory, we're getting all that information from the checker thread. So it'll become a little bit clearer in, in a little bit. So as long as the game's not over, it's reading this threads, this client thread's reading the input from the user. Um, and if it's an X, it sends a packet to the server contain, you know, containing its ID. So this game status checker is there to receive messages from the server um, and since these are blocking calls, we have to run that as a separate thread, essentially. So it's waiting for any game messages from the servers and sets game over to true whenever we've, when the game's actually finished and records the output of the game. So this will make it a little bit clearer, I think. So we've got our two clients, and they've got a TCP connection to the game handler. Um, yeah, so we had all that stuff with the connection list now launching the game handler to handle the game with the two clients, right? And these, these clients have got... This is what happens in... Uh, Tic-tac-toe, right? We've got a connect, TCP connection between the clients and, and the handler. So first, the clients, once they're connected, they're sending a ready message saying, yes, let's go. We're, we're on the starting line. We're revving our engines. We're ready to you know, roar off down the track. So they're sending this ready message to the game handler. And the game handler waves the checker's flag and says, off you go. You know, enter your crosses as fast as you can. Then the two clients open their, set up their UDP connection to the game handler. Because each cross they enter, they're going to send a UDP packet to the game handler. And what the game handler is doing is counting up the UDP packet, DP packets from the two clients. And once the count from one of the clients passes 20, it declares the game won. So, these, so it sets up the connection, the UDP connection to the handler, and starts up this game status checker that uh, has the TCP connection to the game handler. So the client's thread is handling the reading input from the client's sending the packets to the game handler. And we've got a separate thread here that's got a blocking call waiting for the notifications from the game handler 
about the status of the game. So as the players enter their crosses, they're sending UDP packets with their IDs in them to the game handler. And once, once that number of packet, the packet count passes 20, let's say, the game handler sends a player one message to the game status checker, and the racing game client <coughs> can periodically check to see if the player's won or if the player's lost, shut to, and shut down, the game, shut down the game status checker, and then inform the client. This game status checker, it's got this connection to the game handler, three billions saying whether it's won, drawn, or game over. And then it's got this blocking, like receive TCP message, and depending on the type, it updates the status of those booleans. And then we've got the game handler, that's assigns, that coordinates the games, um, assigns IDs to clients, and then it receives these datagram packets from the clients, keeps a record of the number from each client, and when one client passes the threshold, it's, it passes, sends the result back to the players. So this is a, so it's got datagram socket as well as object and input and output streams to the two clients counts of the packets from each of the clients. And then it receives the message, um, waits for the ready message from the clients. So both clients tell it that it's ready. Then it opens and sets up the socket, the datagram socket, UDP connection. Then it sends a message to both clients saying, off you go, start. Initializes packet counts for each of the clients. And then it receives the packets, updates the package counts. Um, yeah, updates the packets counts here. And once one of the packet counts exceeds the threshold, um, it stops the thread and sends the result to the, to the users. So it's the usual, you know, type Java, race game, dot racing game server, race if you want to run it in the, you can run it in NetBeans by right clicking on the classes, or you can run it from the command line in the usual way. So again, you know, in this case, you want to talk about the different classes in your project report, how you play it, how you enter the crosses in order to win it, how's, how's winning actually done, all this kind of stuff. You might want to include diagrams of the architecture, as I've included here. And as usual, no screenshots of code, just screenshots of the command line output. So the sort of command line output that I gave you way back in the, I won't bother finding it now, but, you know, the sort of command line output that the game gives. So this is the sort of stuff you want to put in your project report if you're producing this kind of game. Okay, as usual, it's a quick and slightly rubbish demo, but it does enable you to do real-time games using a combination of TCP and UDP, so it, it's pretty sound the way it's put together, I think, but it could obviously be done a lot better. There might be better ways of building a racing game. You don't have to use this code. It's just there to help you, that's all. Usual warning, um, I haven't ruled out a racing game of this nature in the specs, but if you hand this code in and say it's your project, Obviously, I've written it, so obviously I'll know. So you need to adapt it, put a graphical interface on it, make it into a different racing game, you know, put some bells and whistles on it. And if you use that code as the core, that's okay. But I'm going to mark, give you marks for what you've done, not for what you've copied. Okay, so this lecture talks about how you can implement a multi-threaded racing game using combination TCP UDP, supports lots of clients, playing lots of games simultaneously. Next lecture, we're going to talk about WebSocket um, so last time we talked about um, HTTP, you know, get, put, delete, etc. These stateless, single, unidirectional um, HTTP methods, and then WebSockets, the more recent technology, sits on top of that and enables bidirectional communication over HTTP.